goal is to add in more of these raised beds and I also want to extend some of them and make them longer and it's hard to do when you have this electric fence not in the correct spot. So first thing in the morning I need to go up there and I need to oh, freak out about bugs. I need to go up there and tend to the ducks and the chickens and then we're gonna come down here with whatever morning time in the mildest weather that we have I'm gonna move this thing around, weed whack underneath it, and get it placed just where I want it. Change of plans. I can't get the uh, can't get the weed whacker to start, so we're gonna do some trellises instead. so pounds per tea post um, we're, we're gonna take a break back from pounding the tea posts back with Anna now what we're going to do is take these cucumbers take these jalapenos cut them up into small pieces and pickle them. we're gonna use basically the same recipe that we used last time but and so I didn't really give you the recipe for it last time I realized I just did it and I didn't actually tell you what I was doing so I have this tea bag of a flavor that I don't particularly care for and I have had in my cupboard for years. So we're just gonna take, we're gonna do a teaspoon of red chili pepper. Which don't you care for? Oh, green. Okay. Yeah, it's really old, old, old one. I think it's one we got from the It's not the one that you're tearing apart that I drink. <laughs> and then a tablespoon of dill, a teaspoon of onion powder, and a teaspoon of garlic powder. And that's what we're gonna put inside this tea bag and we're gonna put it underneath the pickles so that, or underneath the cucumbers so that we can um, kind of keep the spices underneath the brine because it's a lot, it, it, it breeds more possibility of having some kind of a mold or something like that if, if they're floating. So uh, we gotta make them be sinkers. What we're gonna do is cut off the blossom end, the top end where it's attached to the plant. Basically you're just cutting off this end because it has that little spiky to it and you're cutting off the blossom end because there's some kind of an enzyme in there that if you don't cut out enough of it then it'll make the pickle softer. Well he's doing that and you can just, as you're doing it, you can just throw them right in the jar. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and start making up the actual um, the spice mix here. And I first heard about this oh, type. What? This is like a regular tea bag. You mm -hmm. do something with that. You gotta dump that out and put nope. some of that in there. Why, why is that? Because that's the one that's for the tannins. The tannins? That's black tea. Okay. I don't like the green tea. Okay. You like the black tea though. You're not destroying those, right? I don't know. I'm okay. just using, because they have the tannins <laughs> in them, and that's what that's what helps it also not to be soft. Yeah. Okay. So putting in our spices. This is twice the amount of, of pickles that we used yesterday. So, um, or tw not yesterday, last time is twice the amount. So uh, this recipe is gonna be a little bit more. I think this is two pounds, but it's, it, was, it was two pints. Two pints. Two pints. cutting off uh, my understanding is at least a sixteenth of an inch. Sixteenth. So, yeah it's not it's not a whole lot that you need that you have to cut off. Okay, got it. You got it. Oh yeah. Easy. This one in particular goes together like that. So it actually works out really well. And then all I do, all I'm gonna do here is just take the tea bag string that came with this one. We just got lucky on this one and it doesn't have like any staples or anything. It was just tied on and there's no glue. So it works out really well. We're just gonna tie off the top and then tie it together. 
So the spices will stay inside of this little convenient bag. So there we go. We got all of our spices inside of our tea bag. Not all tea bags are this type of shape, but this one is, so it works out really well for this. So we'll just put it inside there. While he's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the jalapenos because if you guys have not experienced fermented jalapenos, y'all missing out. They are freaking delicious. Cat's chasing a fly. Good. She's getting her hunting instinct is going on. Okay, so with these, all we're gonna do is just cut off the, the cut off the tip, and oh, I'm gonna compost in here if you want. Uh, cutting off the tip, and then we're just gonna cut them in in rounds. Super simple. You, I suppose you could take out the seeds if you wanted to, but I mean, you know, it's not normal to take the seeds out when you're fermenting them. And just a caution: if you are not interested in heat. This wouldn't be what you want to do because the heat, the fermenting process actually amplifies the heat significantly. It's not quite like uh, like pickled jalapenos where it kind of mutes the flavor a bit. This actually, it really amps up the heat and makes it a lot hotter, which is why we like to do it. Because you get the delicious taste of the jalapenos, but you get much more heat. Yes. Let's just cut to the chase and do a fermented North Carolina Reaper. <gasps> I did go. once. I put, well, I put it in the, I didn't get, no, I didn't ferment Ultimate it. Ultimate heat. I, I put it in the dehydrated pepper. Ultimate yes. heat pepper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Put that Long stuff. Something this size in your chili. Mm -hmm. You're good. <laughs> but it'll last too long. I don't know how long it's going to last, but a couple years. That's me too. So. Do you want to grab another jar? We can mix up the brine. How big of a jar? Just a quart jar. Yeah. Actually, grab a pint. Yeah, wide mouth pint. Wide mouth pint coming up. Because there's not enough now. Yeah, so we'll just use this one. All right. That's perfect. Do you want to put it together? It's a little sweaty. Look at this. I don't think it would fit, actually. <laughs> Let me take my electrolytes. Over it again during this break. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we're going to use the same ratio of salt for this one, uh, for both of them. And that is, it's roughly a 2% solution. Sorry for the clanging there. It's a quart of water and a little, I like to use a little more than a more than two tablespoons of salt, and then you just shake it up. That's it. That's it. That's it. Mm. You wanna make sure, you can heat it up, but you just wanna make sure that when you pour the water over, over these, that, um, that is not hot water. You wanna make sure it is um, less than room or body temperature. We'll pour it over. We'll probably need to make another one, make up another batch. Um, it'll dissolve a lot easier if you use salt, salt, sea salt, or kosher salt, canning salt, stuff like that. Just don't use iodized salt because that iodine has antibacterial properties, and you can mess up your friend. So we're going to use our Mason tops kit, and that is because it is really convenient. All we're going to do is just put this weight on here. Yeah, it's got way too much. I need to go dump some of this out. There we go. Got it dumped out. You want to make sure that you have a good amount of headspace when you're doing these because if not, it can, uh, it can, you want to make sure that the weight is not touching the top of this, okay? You want to make sure that there's enough space you can see in there uh, because it can stop the airflow from, from pushing out. And then, um, uh, what else? That's about it. Just make sure that it's, you also want to make sure you're having enough room when you put this stuff in here um, for expansion because the water is going to expand and contract, especially with the moon cycle and all of those kinds of things. But um, it, 
these ones aren't as tightly packed, so it's not gonna matter terribly much, but if you're making like sauerkraut, stuff like that, that can really push the brine out. So just make sure you have enough room and you're gonna put this inside of some kind of a dish or something like that to catch any overflow. And that's it, you just leave it to ferment until it's done. The jalapenos will usually let go a lot longer, and but the pickles, you don't wanna let them go too terribly long because they can tend to go soft if you leave them too long. Okay, so how is this? Both perfect. So what we do is we put the glass thing on top right here, so none of the stuff goes above the line. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do after that is put it right here, yep. close it up, and we're done. Exactly. That's it. There it is, I think. Uh-oh, the pickle got above. Oh, yeah. Can't have that. We can't have that. Definitely not. We might need a second wait for that one because it's not quite filling up the jar as much as I thought it would. Cannot have that. That's inexcusable. Can't do that. Mm, yeah, that, that works. We just gotta be careful go. not to shake anything here. Yeah, most definitely. Just keep everything level. Keep it in a nice, quiet place to where no cats can jump around it. Shake it out of place. Definitely. There you go. Let's put it over the bottom. Up in the cover. We're just gonna make another gallon of yogurt because I had the last of it yesterday and I want some more yogurt. What about the ranch? Did you eat all that? No, there's still ranch in there. Still ranch. Yep. Do you like it? Good. I'm gonna have to plug the Burger Master tartar sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Recommend you I want some. Says. I want some Burger Master tartar sauce. I haven't had any such in a long time. Can you have <laughs> Bob mail me some? No, I don't think so. If you're watching this, Bob. Hook <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's put the kettle over here. Okay. I'm just watching you do this here. Yeah? All right. So yeah. next up, the, the last ferment that we're going to be doing today is yogurt. going to be yogurt. Because like I said, um, I had the last of it. You like yogurt. I like yogurt, especially raw milk yogurt. So if I can get the seal off. And I figured I would go ahead and because I'm trying to show you guys how I like to incorporate ferments into my everyday life, how I make them, the pattern, stuff like that as I'm kind of developing our pattern at this new place. So. That's why I'm showing you how I'm making yogurt again, yogurt again. But this is also a good opportunity for me to kind of answer some of the questions that you guys had in the last video that we had. So um, with the seal, since we're doing this in the instant pot, the seal stays off the whole time. And um, that is because you don't want to build up pressure. Uh, because pressure means it'll It'll, it'll get too hot. We don't want it to get too hot. We just want to ferment this at 104 degrees. Or, the, well, my particular Instant Pot is 104, 104 degrees. All we're gonna do with this one is I'm just gonna hit the yogurt button. It's already preset for 24 hours and 30 minutes. And that is because we want to do a 24 hour ferment. But it takes roughly half an hour, really it takes a little longer than a half an hour, to actually get it warmed up. We're gonna come back in about half an hour and we will check on it, check the temperature, and we will add in our one cup of yogurt. It has been about an hour since we left our uh, milk to heat up, and it's about 100 degrees, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, we're gonna combine the yogurt into it so we can get it fermenting. Because right now, it's not fermenting. It's just warm milk. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take some of the milk out of the actual uh, Instapot here, and we're just gonna go ahead and slowly combine it into here. And then we are, basically we're tempering it. We want to, you wanna do it nice and slow so that you can get the temperature of the yogurt, and the, which, is the, which is the culture, the cup of yogurt that we're adding to this, that is the culture. And that's kind of how yogurt tends to work. We're going to be doing a ferment together later on with a milk that is, with a with a um, a culture that I'm told is intended for raw milk at room temperature. So I'll be letting you guys in on, in on that one. So this one, if you're not using raw milk, you want to heat this up to 180 degrees, and you can do that in your instant pot. 
but we're using raw milk and we wanna make sure that it stays raw, all the enzymes, all the lactase in there, we wanna make sure we're preserving that really well. So that's why we're doing it th with this way. But if you're not starting out with raw milk, heat it up. And I'm trying to think of any other questions that people had had about this. I think it was mostly just the culture, like where do you get the culture from? When you're looking up the yogurt, you wanna make sure if you can get organic, that's ideal. If you, if you can, the best kind of yogurt you can afford, something that you are able to get your hands on is the best, is what you wanna do. You know, it, and it doesn't have to be some fancy swanky yogurt, you know? You can just save the yogurt and use it uh, in future batches. Um, so you wanna make sure that you see this here let me see if I can get it to zoom in here. It says six live active cultures and it lists the cultures on there. You wanna make sure that it says live active cultures. Not all yogurts say that. So just check the back for that. Make sure it says that and then you should be good to go. Okay, so let's just put this guy in here. And then we're gonna put our lid back on. Make sure that it's still set to venting and we still do not have the seal on there. That's it. We're back at it. We're gonna give this another try, see if we can finish up the trellises. It's evening time. It has cooled off to a nice, cool 101. So let's see what we can do. I don't think it's actually 101. That's just what my thermometer says. So we got a pretty good amount done out here and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys up close because I know you're a little far off, but it's kind of hard to, to show you a lot of stuff while being close up. So we got all the T posts pounded in the ground and we got our trellises up. We got four 16 foot cattle panel trellises done. I'm sure you can see here, I got everything watered. And then I got some of the fence moved here, but um, I give up for the day. Did you get boo? Ooh. <laughs> He's got boo. Okay, so we're gonna hopefully be able to run this post down, um, going all the way this direction, as far down as we can go. I think we got one, two, three, four. I think we got like five panels that we have to play with. So we should be able to move it down probably about two more sections down there. So that's pretty darn exciting and I'm looking forward to that. And then we're going to be able to build. See, this right here is why he doesn't join me outside as much as I, as much as we would both hope. Because he's just miserable. <laughs> he sweats like you would not believe. I have to buy him electrolytes just so that he can function. <laughs> it's pretty bad. He just sweats. 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 Um, and then, yeah. He sweats but he has to wear he has to wear the sweats and the long sleeve shirts sometimes many many layers in order to protect from the bugs he's just kind of got the crap into that stick but um so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna do that we're gonna build a bunch more uh, beds down there for all the things that we already started we got the leafy greens the kales we got some more cabbages we got beans all kinds of stuff and that's kind of where it's gonna be going at least for now. Thank you so much for spending the day with us today. I hope that you guys enjoyed following us around, get an idea of the ferments and, and the garden stuff and all the homestead building stuff that we're doing around here. If you guys are new around here, we just relocated, relocated to Southern Missouri. We're transplants from Washington State and we're just in the process of building our homestead. I also like to do all kinds of videos on canning, freezing, dehydrating, fermenting, as well as videos on how to actually prepare those foods in your everyday cooking. If that sounds awesome to you, make sure you check out this link right here. This is the subscribe button. This is what's gonna keep you stuck around and reminded of all the things that are happening around here up here is a video mr google pants thinks that you're gonna enjoy this is my last homesteading vlog and then up here is a video or is our uh, homesteading vlog playlist i hope you guys will check that out we'll see you next time thanks for watching bye